Right, so um, let's get started with this first live stream. Today I'm going to discuss several things regarding the present tenses. Um, we're going to talk about present simple, present continuous, uh, present perfect continuous and present perfect in a different, slightly different order. But for now, let's get started because there's a lot to discuss. Um, if you have questions, leave them in the uh, chat. And as you can see, I have my chat section open so I can have a look at all of your questions. The PowerPoint will be made available afterwards, which you can download on my Wakelet, and I will put the link to that in the description. So let's get started with the present tenses, which is, of course, very interesting. So um, let's open up the PowerPoint. And let's begin. So what are we going to discuss? Well, to, we'll start with an overview of all the present tenses. And I will give some examples to illustrate um, how these tenses kind of appear and what they really are and how the, what they look like. And then we'll also look at all these tenses individually. So we'll start with present simple, move on to present continuous, look at present perfect, and finally, present perfect continuous. We'll end with a timeline, and I'll show you some real world examples which I've just stolen from the internet to show you how these tenses appear in the real world. So let's start with present simple, which is of course the basic tense of all tenses, right? A good understanding of present simple always helps with understanding the others. And that's also our first example what we're going to look at. But of course, um, you can download my present tenses or my tenses overview, not only present tenses overview, my tenses overview from my Wakelet. So make sure that you, if you want, you download it, it's, you open it in your PDF reader, and then you can fill in everything that I'm saying, and you can work along while um, we're going through all of these tenses. Right, so let's get started with our examples. So first of all, we have the present simple. And the present simple is very basic, right? We get something like, I live near the city center, or um, she lives near the city center, or uh, we live near the city center. So you can basically do everything you like with this um, sentence, but as long as it's only the stem of the verb, we use present simple. So live in this case. Present continuous is a bit different. We get some extra words, uh, an auxiliary verb that needs, um, need, that needs to be added. So we get, she is eating a sandwich. If we look at present perfect, we get, we have been, we have seen this movie before. And then for present perfect continuous, we get, they have been speaking for hours. Now, I do notice that my uh, slides are not showing on the screen, so I'll definitely change that now. Let's see. So I'm going to change this um, up a bit and try to solve this problem, but I will be back, of course, in a few moments.
Right. So as I've solved the PowerPoint issue, let's move on. So, um, as I've said, these are our examples. Uh, for present simple, we get, I live near the city center. For present continuous, we get, um, she's eating a sandwich. For present perfect, we see we have seen this movie before. And for present perfect continuous, we get they have been speaking for hours. So, we use the present simple for things that happen always, never or regularly. And but also for habits and for giving our facts and permanent situations. We also use present simple for opinions and for stories, which is kind of related to vivid storytelling. When you're telling a story in present simple, it's always um, the idea to create a nice storytelling experience. And then when we want to give commentaries um, about or on uh, quick actions and events, we also tend to use present simple. We can also use present continuous here, but we'll look at the different la difference later on. And when we're giving instructions and demonstrations, we also use present simple. So, some examples of these cases are, for example, um, in the case of things that happen always, never and regularly and the habits, she always eats breakfast at eight. So that's something that happens always. We see that in the sentence, we have the word always that indicates that something happens always. Um, so this is a regular thing, right? It happens every morning. And if we talk about habits, we can say, well, I know that he leaves at work at five. That is a habit. It's something that happens every day at five. And the same happens for uh, the breakfast at eight is also a habit, right? So kind of they're, they're kind of the same in this case. Now in the other cases, the facts, uh, permanent situations, commentaries and events and instructions and demonstrations, the sentences are a bit different. So we get something like this. Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. That is a fact, a permanent situation. And it doesn't change, no matter what happens. It's always um, boils at 100 degrees. If you look at stories or opinions in this case, um, I think you should resign. Or right, I'm giving a particular opinion. I think it's my opinion and I think you should resign. Um, the stories kind of make sense. So when you're telling a story, um, you say something like, well, I started this morning uh, which is past simple in this case, and it happened like this. So I, I, I uh, was at school, and um, um, the person says, listen up, what do you think of uh, this particular event? And he thinks for a while, and then he says, well, I don't really agree with what you're saying. Right, so that's an example of how you can use present simple in a story. But as you notice that, you know, if I want to say that something happened earlier, I need to refer to past simple. But again, that's for next week. We're not going to look at past simple now. Here's an example of the commentaries and the quick actions. So it's something like Rashford passes to Ronaldo, Ronaldo crosses, nice cross and Cavani scores. Right, so that's how we can use present simple to give commentaries and um, to talk about quick actions and events. When we give instructions and demonstrations with present simple, it happens something like, we get something like this. In case of an emergency, oxygen masks will drop from the ceiling, pull the marks towards you and breathe normally. So these are instructions. And we use present simple for instructions as well. Right, um, now, 
Just to summarize everything we've discussed. Um, no, we're not summarizing yet. We're looking at fixed arrangement in the future. Now there's something related to present simple that is different from what we've previously discussed. And that is that use of present simple for fixed arrangements in the future. And when we talk about future here, we talked about scheduled events in particular. So we're not talking about um, ideas or feelings um, that I might have in the future about something. And we're talking about things that are really scheduled and in that sense are things that happen regularly, right? So every these, schedule, uh, these scheduled events are regular events. Um, so, if you look at an example, the train leaves at 12.05, school starts at 8.30, and we eat breakfast, or we eat at 1800 hours. So these are the things that are scheduled, and we know this because we have time uh, labels, right? Things that indicate that we have a particular time. Um, and as you can see, they're also kind of like facts, right? School starts at 8.30, that's just a regular fact, that's nothing very special. So that's how we use present simple for the future. When we talk about the future in week three, I will look back at present simple and I will indicate um, some of these examples as well. So I will refer back to these examples um, of how we can use present simple for the future. Right. We're now going to look at how we can make affirmative sentences questions and negations with present simple. So affirmative sentences are sentences that are not negations and sentences that are not questions. Um, so something like I live near the city center is an affirmative sentence. For a question we get do I live near the city center and for negations we get I don't live near the city center. Now something you should notice is that we use the auxiliary verb to do here. So to create questions and to create negations in present simple, we need to have the auxiliary verb to do. So um, for questions we get do I live near the city center and for negations we get I do not live at the city center or if you're using the contracted form it's don't. Right, so for questions in present simple, we need to have to do. And the verb stays the same. And that's interesting, because as we move on to the next set of examples, you see that when we have affirmative sentences with a she in the subject, we get extra, extra s. Right, so we know for present simple that he, he, she and it always get extra s and sometimes it even gets extra es and that happens when we have a verb that ends with a vowel as you will see now so in the case of does we get extra es because it ends with an o to do right it's a vowel sound so that means that we need to add the extra s what you also should notice is that if we have this extra s here um, for does we don't get the extra s at the main verb, right? So it does she usually walk, does not mean, even though we have she, it doesn't mean we need to have does she usually walks, right? That's incorrect. So that's something to think of. So when we use present simple, we only get extra s if we have the auxiliary verb to do for the do we don't get it for the main verb or full verb. If you look at negations, we see the same as happens with the questions. We get does and we add not, and we don't have extra s when we talk about the main verb. So she doesn't usually walk instead of she doesn't usually walks. So walk, no extra s here. So what is important? Well, that we get extra s for he, she, it. And this only happens um, at the main verb in affirmative sentences. And for questions and negations, it happens in the auxiliary verb. So does and doesn't.
right? So that those are ways to make affirmative sentences, questions and negations with present simple. Here's another example. He goes to Brazil every summer. You see that we get extra ES because the main or the full verb is to do, to go, to go. And because it ends with an O, we need to add extra ES. As you know, we don't do this with the main verb for questions because then we get, does he go to Brazil every summer? And for negations, we get, he doesn't go to Brazil every summer. So we get, does he go? And he doesn't go. Again, extra ES with the auxiliary verb, not with the main verb. This is a common mistake, so that's why I'm putting extra emphasis on these mistakes. So to summarize the use of present simple, what do we know? We know that we use present simple in the habitual present, right? So these are the things that are mentioned that are uh, things that happen always, never, regularly, the habits, um, things that are uh, basically things we do on a regular basis, right? As was the example, I always eat breakfast at eight. We also use present simple for the natural, for neutral present. So for facts, opinions, ideas and general truths as what I mentioned with the water that boils at 100 degrees. But we mentioned facts like um, the Netherlands has 17 million um, inhabitants, which is a fact. We also use present simple, right? The Netherlands has. So, has 17 million uh, inhabitants. Present simple. When we talk about the historic present, um, which is basically when we tell a story, we also use present simple. So, um, as I was, you know, as I gave my example of I went to school and the person said, and then I said, well, he says, la la la, he thinks for a while and then he blah blah blah. That is an example of using present simple in history, right? Because at that moment in time, it was present. And finally, we can also use present simple when talking about the future. And we do this with fixed events in the future, right? So it's like the train leaves and school starts and we eat breakfast at eight and we eat dinner at six, right? These are things that are fixed events in the future. So I was able to summarize everything from the long list of present simple uses into these four options, habitual present, neutral present, historic present and future present, which kind of sounds weird, future present, but it, it makes sense. Right. Let's move on to our next tense. So we looked at present simple, which is the simple tense, haha. And we're now going to look at present continuous, or we're going to continue with present continuous. We use present continuous for things that are happening now, which means that present continuous usually appears in a context of something that is going on on the moment of speaking. So as we're speaking, something is happening and that something is a thing that I'm referring to. So um, we can also use present continuous for repeated actions, which we'll look at in a second. And then we can use present continuous for developments and changes over a longer period. Now this sounds weird. How would you use present continuous for developments and changes over a longer period? But as I said, we'll see, we'll look at an example in a few seconds. And this as well, this is new, kind of new idea of present continuous, that we can use it to show irritation. Um, so here are the examples with present continuous. So as I mentioned, we used for things that are happening now. So in this case, I am explaining the present tenses. This is something that's happening now as we speak. Repeated actions. Look, 
he's hitting the dog. Now, we usually use this with verbs that actually can be repeated over several times. Um, uh, you won't say that I am explaining present continuous in a repeated sense. Right, so I am explaining present continuous. That's either something that took, takes a long time, but it's not something that repeats itself in a short period of time, you know, several times, as is the case with hitting the dog, which is, of course, something you should never do. Never hit a dog. Um, so this is an example of the developments and changes over a longer period. Whoa, you're getting thinner and thinner. Um, this is a sentence you could use in a particular context when something or someone is, um, you haven't seen someone for a while and then you see them at several moments in time and then you say, hey, you're getting thinner and thinner. Every time I see you, you're getting thinner. Finally, we can also use present continuous to show irritation. Why are you always talking when I'm trying to learn something? So, why are you always talking a form of irritation? Um, you can also say something like, my sister is always nagging, just ignore her. Or, um, she's always yelling at me. Right? That's something that happens regularly. And it's, um, it's, it's a form of irritation. I, I don't like that this person yells at me, so um, I'm irritated. So let's look at how we can make present continuous. We make present continuous out of two separate parts. With present simple, we had the auxiliary verb to do when we made questions and when we made negations. For present continuous, we have the auxiliary verb to be. And we need it in every form. So that means that both for, for, for uh, affirmative sentences, questions and negations, we need to have to be in there. So, in this case, um, it means that we need to know what to be is. And to be is an irregular form. Right? It's not the same as all the other verbs where we simply have the stem and then we add S for he, she, it. We have I am, you are, he, she, it is, we are, you are, and they are. So, as you can see, you, we, you, and they are the same, and I am, um, he, she, it are different. When we want to make present continuous, we need to add a present participle. So we get I am, uh, I am, you are, he, she, it is, we are, you are, they are, plus the present participle. And the present participle is basically a verb plus ing. So verb plus ing is our present participle. Now, if you're someone who thinks, wait, isn't there something else that's also verb plus ing? Yes, that's a gerund. We're not going to look at gerunds now because gerunds are a very specific type of language use. Um, but in this case, um, it's not the same as a present participle, right? So there's a difference between gerund and present participle. So a present participle is not the same as a gerund. Here are some examples. She is nagging about a boyfriend. Is is to be plus verb plus ing for nagging. They are leaving now. Go say goodbye. Are to be plus verb leave, plus ing, are leaving now. And you see that it's happening now because we have the word now. This would be an example of the irritation um, use of present continuous. So she is nagging about the birth and is irritation. They are leaving now, go say goodbye, is something that's happening now. And I am watching television at the moment. Again, something is happening now. And we know that because of at the moment. Right, so I am watching television at the moment. Am plus verb plus ing. Let's look at the different types again. So we have affirmative sentences, which is I am heading out. As you can see, we have verb uh, to be, sorry, plus verb plus ing. When we make questions, we need to change something around. Right, we get inversion again, as we also had with uh, to with present simple, right? So the um, pronoun and the auxiliary verb change positions. So we get, am I heading out, verb plus ing.
For negations, we simply add not. I am not heading out. So affirmative sentences, I am heading out. Questions, am I heading out? And negations, I am not heading out. Another example with an affirmative sentence, we are leaving the country. A question, are we leaving the country? And a negation, we are not leaving the country. So affirmative sentence, are to be plus verb leave plus ing. Question, are to uh, verb plus ing. And for negations, are plus not plus verb plus ing. Right, and don't forget the inversion we get for questions. Now, there are some issues when we look at particular verbs and they're used in present continuous because some verbs simply do not appear in present continuous form or progressive form when we talk about specific meanings. So, we call these verb state verbs. And there's a long list of state verbs, but in general, these are verbs related to mental or emotional states like states like believe, doubt, prefer, and realize. Um, so you won't say something like, oh, I am believing in God, right? Believe is, um, is something that's kind of fixed. And because it's fixed, um, we use present simple here. So we can't use believe in progressive form. We can't say believing. The same goes for verbs related to the senses. Um, if we want to say that something has a very nice smell, you're not saying, you won't say um, it is smelling nice. Right? You say it smells nice. So it smells nice. Not it's smelling. So this is not correct. However, you can say, what are you doing? Well, I'm smelling this dish. Because then you're talking about the act of smelling, which is different than something, you know, giving off scent. Right, so we can't use smell in present continuous form when, it's to when we talk about giving off, giving off a particular smell or particular scent. But we can use present continuous when we talk about the act of smelling. So when I'm doing, we can do that. But the thing doing, you know, giving the scent, we can't really do that. So that's not present continuous uh, usable. We can't use that in present continuous. The same goes for communicating and causing reactions. All right. And there are some other verbs like concern and contain and matter and possess. Um, so if you say something like, well, he possesses the skills, but he's not able to do it. Um, you can't say, well, he is possessing the skill. Now, in a particular context in which you can kind of use possess in present continuous is when you say, um, um, when you say something like um, that ghost is possessing um, that person, right? Then we're using it in a particular different context. So there was a question. Um, someone says, well, can't we say it's smelly? Yes, but if you say that it is smelly, um, we're using is in present simple form, right? That's a good sentence. It is smelly. Smelly is in this case an adjective. It's not a verb. So we're not using the verb to smell. We're using the adjective smelly. And the adjective says something about it. Right? So again, we're not using present continuous. We're using present simple. And our main verb in this case is is. Right? So it is smelly. Is is our main verb. Smelly is the adjective. Um, and we use it. 
And of course, the meaning of this particular um, phrase is that something smells bad, right? Um, so we say, well, that is smelly, then it's kind of, it doesn't smell nice. How do I know? Because I did. So um, some I might be doing that with, let's say, a plate of food that has been standing out for, I don't know, hours. Someone walks by and says, and I do this. And they say, what are you doing? Well, I am smelling this dish, but it is smelly, right? I mean, which means it stinks. It is smelly. It stinks. So um, back to those state verbs. I want to illustrate another example. Here we have the sentence, he weighs 70 kilos. And we also have the sentence, he is weighing himself. Now these are two different sentences, right? They talk about the same concept and the same idea. Um, but it's different. So he weighs 70 kilos. Then we're talking about the fact that he contains that amount of uh, mass that he weighs 70 kilos. We're talking about um, his weight. If we talk about he is weighing himself, it means that the person is actually on a scale looking at his weight. Right? So this is the act of weighing. And this is how much a person weighs. So here we have to, uh, to kind of a dialogue in which you might use this sentence. How much do you weigh? Well, I weigh 70 kilos. And here we have someone on the scale. Um, and this person does not weigh 70 kilos. But, um, you know, this person is weighing himself. He is weighing himself. So let's summarize present continuous. We use present continuous for things that are actually happening now. And it's kind of funny that our happening is also present continuous. We also use it for repeated actions. Remember, hitting the dog, which is something you should never do. And also developments and changes over a longer period. Hey, you're getting thinner and thinner. Getting thinner and thinner. And to show irritation. God, he's always talking about hitting his dog. Right? That's irritation. And you don't like that. So, what should we use? Should we use present simple? Or should we use present continuous? Let's check it out. Again, we use present simple for things that happen always, never or regularly. For habits, for facts and permanent situations, for opinions, for stories for commentaries of quick actions and events, and for instructions and demonstrations. We use present continuous for things that are happening now, repeated actions, developments and changes over a longer period, and to show irritation. The most important difference between present simple and present continuous is the emphasis on duration, right? which means how long something takes place. If something is fixed, or if it's something that, you know, we don't want to know how long something is, um, how long something is going on or something, we use present simple. If we want to put emphasis on duration, we use present continuous. So that's one of the ways how you can distinguish simple and continuous. And the same goes, and you'll see that later on when we talk about present perfect continuous, but also when we'll talk about past continuous and past simple next week, that the duration thing plays a very important role in these distinctions. So it's now time to talk about the present perfect. And the present perfect is, in my opinion, the most difficult tense. These are my students when I mention present perfect, right? They all start crying and are afraid of what will happen. They don't, they don't know what will um, happen when we talk about present perfect. So some of the basics of present perfect are, we use present perfect for finished events which have a connection with the present. And that's the most important thing to remember. There is a, a connection with the present. And that connection with the present is what distinguishes present perfect from other tenses, 
right? It's something that started in the past and still influences the present. That's also a, a phrase I would use um, when talking about present perfect. We also use present perfect for the news. And this is related to the word just. And I'll show you in a second. We also use present perfect to talk about repetition up to now. So when something has been repeated for several times and it, you know, it's been done until now, you know, it's also a situation in which you use present perfect and also present perfect continuous, but we'll look at that later on. So um, present perfect is used for the news and for repetition up to now, but also for finished events which have a connection with the present. Let's look at some examples. I haven't seen any of the Harry Potter films. Haven't seen. Now, how does this relate to the present? Well, if we think of this in a literal sense, then after since the moment that the Harry Potter movies came out, which is in, I think, 2001, one of the fans, or 2002, one of the Harry Potter fans, let me know when the Sorcerer's Stone or the Philosopher's Stone came out first. So starting from that moment in time, until now, which is 2021, which is 20 years later, which means that we're getting old. Um, well, I haven't watched the films. I haven't seen them. So that's how this links to the present. So from the moment the film came out until now, I haven't seen them. Right? I did, of course. I've seen them several times and I'm going to watch them again in, in, in due course. Um, but this is what it means. This is how this links to the present. Here are two, here's another example um, that relates to news. So remember in June somewhere this year, um, the Duke of Edinburgh has died, had died. Um, the sentence is, we have just received the statement from Buckingham Palace that the Duke of Edinburgh has died. So this is the news part. This is the actual news. He has died. And this is the news person giving the news. So the news anchor tells us that they have just received, which is related to the word just. Remember when I said it was related to the word just. A statement from Buckingham Palace that the Duke of Edinburgh has died. Now this is not that he has just died. right? It's not that he literally two seconds before has died, had died. But it's because it's news, because it's the first time we're hearing about this, we use present perfect. So it's the first time we hear about something, we use present perfect. Here's another one relating to the repetition up till now. She has written 10 Instagram posts, so she needs a break from her phone. Has written 10 Instagram posts. It's something that you know she's been doing for quite some time. And we can also use this sentence in present perfect continuous. But we'll look at present perfect continuous later, so I won't give the sentence now, but maybe I'll do it later. If you already know what the present perfect continuous sentence is of she has written 10 Instagram posts, drop it in the chat and I will mention it when we get there. Now, next week, we're going to look at past simple and present perfect. And, you know, is it really a PowerPoint if you don't have the bouncy animation? So make sure that next week, when we talk about present perfect and past simple, you're here as well. And that you're subscribed so that you know the difference between past simple and present perfect and when to use which. So how is present perfect made? Well, we make present perfect with to have plus a past participle. Remember we talked about present participle just now, right? I'm just going to write it down here that verb plus ing is present participle. Present participle. We're looking at past participle, right? So it consists of to have plus a past participle. And to have is basically, I have, you have, he, she, it, has, we have, you have, and they have. Right, so again, we get a different form for he, she, it. Not he, she, it, haves, but he, she, it, has. Um, 
And in this case, we have verb plus ed or an own form when we want to talk about the past participle. So the past participle is either verb plus ed or an own form. And we use the own form for irregular verbs. And I think there are about 150 irregular verbs, but you can find um, a long list of irregular verbs online. So I see, um, um, I see a question, a very good question. Can you also use this, in this case present perfect, without the word just? And yes, of course you can. You can use present perfect without just. Um, but when you, sometimes if something is really just, if, really, if something has recently happened, then you want to use a word like just or recently, especially if you're giving news, right? So um, let's take the example. I've just heard that um, Queen Elizabeth is stepping down, is abdicating, right? I have just heard, which is literally maybe five minutes ago. That, that's what happens in the news, right? They hear something and then they send out breaking news. Our Dutch news um, people send push notifications for literally everything. Uh, Prime Minister Rutte um, brushes his teeth and then we get a push notification because it's important, right? Now in Dutch, we don't have this, this construction uh, used in this particular way, so it's a bit different, so I can't give the Dutch example. Um, but yes, you can use present perfect without just, you can. So let's get back to the past participle thing. So uh, here are two examples. John has passed his exam, great news, has passed, which means it's something that has just happened. Maybe this is something we've just seen on the Blackboard or Magister or SOM or it's learning or whatever, Moodle, I don't know which ELO you're, you're using. Um, Dacia has announced they won't sell the Sandero in the UK. Has announced, again, this is news. Have you ever seen Romeo and Juliet? Have you ever seen? Have seen? Um, this is talking the same as the Harry Potter movies, right? So this is a sentence talking about from a particular time in the past until now. Now, if we talk about Romeo and Juliet, which was written around 1601 or so, you know, it's not about when I was born, because I'm not that old. But, um, you know, it's, it's, it's basically all the time that you've been alive. Have you ever seen Romeo and Juliet? Right, so again, we make present perfect with to have plus a past participle, um, which is either a verb plus ed for regular verbs or its own form for irregular verbs. And a long list of uh, irregular verbs can be found on the internet, and I will put them in the description as well. So if you're re-watching this, Make sure to check the description for the list of irregular verbs. Some examples with present perfect. We have the affirmative sentences. He has seen her before. And we're here, here we have the word before, which refers to you know, the, the period of time before talking, before we were talking about this. Um, questions. Has he seen her before? Again, we get inversion. Which is, not, which is not particularly related to tenses, more English syntax. And he has not seen her before. Has not seen. Again, we add not. And yes, of course, you may. Um, you may use has apostrophe, has an apostrophe T. Another set of examples, affirmative sentences, they have gone home. Questions, have they gone home? Again, to go is uh, an irregular verb. So that's why we don't say goed, but gone. And negations, they have not gone home. Again, you can say haven't. So let's talk about this present influence thing. Right, I mentioned with the videos on Harry Potter that you can um, kind of um, talk about a particular moment in time when the films came out, and then we talk about from that moment on until now. 
So, I have learned French in secondary school. This is a sentence in present perfect. Because the question is, do I st still speak French? Well, yes, I do. So the learning of French started in the past, in my case, 2007, and it influenced the present. 2021, I still speak French. We. Oui. I've learned French in secondary school. Do I still speak French? No, I don't speak French. So that means that the learning of French happened in the past, in 2007, and kind of remained in the past, in 2007. So there's no present influence. Do you see the difference? So here we have, there, there is some present influence because I still speak French. Here we don't have present influence because I don't speak French. Right, so the learning was from was just a brief period in time and there's no present influence. Now these are a list, this is a list of pre, pre, perfect indicators, present perfect indicators, past perfect indicators, and of course the continuous form of these. Um, these perfect indicators are kind of words that show us that we need to use present perfect. You probably noticed that we have always and never, right? Um, and these are both also used in present simple. But, as you might know, if we have a past and present connection, we use present perfect. So that's how you can distinguish whether you need to use present simple for always or never, or present perfect. How long have you waited for in? Have waited. It's a regular verb. They've lived here until their grandparents died. Have lived. Again, a regular verb. We haven't seen each other since high school. Haven't seen. Have not seen is an irregular verb. Right? So these perfect indicators are words that can be used to find present perfect in these sentences. In the sentences in which you need to fill in present perfect. Now, let's say that we want to make this connection between the present and the past, but we also want to focus on duration. Now, what do we know from things that are related to duration? In those cases, we use continuous. So we can create a combination of the two, a combination of present continuous and present perfect to talk about something that started in the past and it has been going on for a longer period. So again, the duration element is key here. So, um, present perfect continuous. We use present perfect continuous for finished events which have a connection with the present with a focus on duration. Right, so the duration is key. But also for actions that have just stopped and which show a result. So when we talk about a particular result, right, when something happens and there is a result, we um, also use present perfect continuous. What do I mean? Let's look at some examples. Um, we also use present perfect continuous for repeated and continuous actions and to talk about how long something has been going on, which is kind of related to all of them. So I have been waiting for hours. Where were you? Have been waiting, right? Uh, this person has just arrived probably. So um, I started waiting, I waited, I waited, I waited. Uh, I'm kind of still waiting, but this person came, right? So this person arrived and I said, hey, I've been waiting for hours, where were you? This one, actions that have just stopped. You look tired. Yes, I have been running. Right? I have been running. There is a result. Um, and when we want to talk about how long something has been going on, well, how long have you been studying English? And this also relates to this one, right? The repeated actions or the continuous actions. I'm still studying English. How long have you been studying English?
I still study English. I'm still studying English. How do we make present perfect continuous? Well, we do this with to have plus been plus a present participle. Again, present participle. Past participle is verb plus ed or its own form. And the present participle was verb plus ing. So again, we have have, has, has, have, 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 plus been, which, you know, if you're a, uh, you know, if you have a sharp eye, you might have noticed that this is the past participle of to be, right? So bin is the past participle of to be. Um, and the present participle of the actual verb that we need to fill in. So if we look at, uh, at this example, um, I have been talking for an hour. Have been talking. Have, which is here, been, present uh, past participle of to be, and talking, present participle of the verb to talk. Which means that I have been going on for about an hour, so it's kind of time to round off. So, what we can do now is we can create a timeline. Um, so how do we do this? Well, we first need to indicate the present, past and future. We can put future somewhere over here as well. Um, and the first thing we need to indicate is present simple. Now, I usually say present simple happens around the present. And this is because present simple is also used for things like facts and opinions and, um, you know, basic truths. And those things are related to the present, but not related to the present as is the case with present uh, continuous. So present continuous is used for things that are happening, that are happening now, right? Um, and for things that are happening now, we use present continuous. Um, where do we put uh, present perfect? Well, it's something that started in the past and still influences the present. So present perfect. And if we want to put emphasis on the duration, and that will make a bit longer, it, like the real link to the present, in this case, that's the inter-duration, it's longer. We use present perfect continuous. Right, so present simple is something that happens around the present, facts, opinions, uh, general truths, etc., etc. Present continuous, something that's happening now, and of course, irritation. Um, so for example, uh, someone is irritated by uh, one of the first people in the chat. So you could say, well, um, he is annoying. And I see that we have Rod as well. Rod, welcome. Um, good to see you. Um, and we have, of course, present perfect, which is used for something that started in the present and still influences, uh, started in the past and influences the present. Um, and if we work for some duration, which means that it took a longer period of time, or I want to put emphasis on the fact that it has been a particular long time, particularly long time, we use present perfect continuous. Right. So let's look at some real world examples of these tenses, right? I took three images from the internet, which are not raised in my own opinion. They're just random um, screenshots from the internet. Um, and we have here soundscape archaeologist Mylène Pardoyan is rep reproducing or reproducing the sounds that were heard inside and outside the Paris Cathedral from its construction in the 13th century until the 2019 fire. Um, here we also have play. Um, hooves click clack on the 18th century cobblestones as merchants haggle 
in the distance. Ever imagined the sounds that brought to life a place like Paris is Notre Dame Cathedral hundreds of years ago? This is what Milan is trying to achieve. Based in the French city of Lyon, she introduces herself as a soundscape archaeologist, a profession she invented after she started questioning why museums often neglect using sounds in their exhibits. Over the past 10 years, she has been scoring monuments and construction sites around the country and analyzing, which is also related to has been, acoustic environments to help her recreate sounds that allow us to travel back in time. So what do we see? Here, I'll do it in Trident White as well, see what happens. We don't know what might happen. So here we have present continuous. Right, and this is used because this is happening now. Right, so this is something that's really happening now. She's probably doing it as we speak as well. So that's why we use present continuous. Um, play and haggle is the vivid storytelling, present simple. In both cases. And then we have is, which is also present simple, which is the neutral present. Is trying, present continuous, because happening now. Um, and then we have introduces, which is also present simple. And here we have has been scoring and has been analyzing is present perfect continuous. And these present perfect continuous issues are used because it started in the past, right? So she started analyzing at some point and she's still analyzing, she's still doing that. So again, it focuses on duration. So the duration thing is key here. Right, she started at some point, she's still doing it. She's still analyzing, she's still scoring monuments. Right, so these are nice examples of present continuous, present simple, and present perfect continuous. Let's check our next um, example. Apple plans, which is present simple, to start with some components that tend to require replacements, such as displays, batteries, and camera modules. This is about um, an article that says that Apple is trying is going to uh, give um, consumers the opportunity to replace their own parts of their iPhones. The company says it will have more than 200 parts and tools available at launch and plans for more to be added next year. The repair program will initially be available only for iPhone 12 and iPhone 13 users, but will later expand to Mac computers that use Apple's new in-house M1 chip. The company will only reveal the prices of its spare parts when the program for formally launches next year. But Apple said it will charge individual, oh sorry, said is of course past simple. Apple said it will charge individual users the same prices it currently charges independent repair providers. So here we have plans, which is present simple. Um, and this is present simple because it's in the future. It's probably very certain that they'll do this. It's kind of scheduled and planned already. Um, so this is something we'll talk about later on when we talk about the future. But this is present simple. The company says present simple. 
it's also kind of this general fact, right? It's, it's, there's, there's some storytelling here. They're telling us a story. The company says it will have more than 200 parts and plans for, uh, which is also the same present simple because it's very certain, for more to be added next year. The repair program, blah, blah, blah. And here we have that use, the Mac computers that use present simple. Um, because it is um, a fact, right? Computers that use this particular M1 chip. Here we have present simple because of future. Um, and this charges is a fact or habit, right? They do this, it happens regularly, this charging, um, you know, this, this happens all the time, right? It's a fact, it's a habit, it's just a general truth that Apple charges independent repair providers this amount of money. Right, so nice instances of present simple and um, all have something either to do with a fact, a general truth, or a future. And this is an article from the CNN. Now this one is also from the BBC and it's related to coronavirus. So let's have a look what it says. Members of an online movement infected with pandemic conspiracies are shifting their focus and are increasingly peddling falsehoods about climate change. Matthew is convinced, which is something I'm gonna say something about, that shadowy forces lie behind two of the biggest news stories of all time and that he has not um, he's not being told the truth. This whole campaign of fear and propaganda is an attempt to try and divide some agenda, drive some agenda. It doesn't matter whether it's climate change or a virus or something else. Originally from the UK, Matthew has been living in New Zealand for the past 20 years. The country is one of the several that have aimed to completely stamp out COVID-19 through strict lockdowns. So here we have some interesting things. The content is interesting for one part, but also the tenses and the use of tenses is also very interesting. So here we have R shifting, present continuous. Um, and present continuous is used because it's happening now. And the development and change. Right? So these people are changing their, their views. And they are increasing, increasingly peddling, same idea, right? So it's present continuous, happening now. Here we have is convinced. And this is present simple passive. And it's passive because you can't use convince in this context um, to kind of reflect on himself. So he can't say Matthew convinces because convinced takes a direct object. Um, and if Matthew is the person who is convinced, then he cannot be the agent, right? So he is convinced by something else that this is happening. Um, and he believes that he is not being told the truth. Now you might say, hold up, hold up. You just said, you just said that we cannot use to tell or to be in progressive forms. Because if you've looked up the list of, of state verbs, you saw that be is there as well. That's true. But we're not using being told in a present continuous form of um, to be, right? We're using not being told here um, in the present continuous passive form of to tell. So to tell is our main word, is our main verb, and our main element we're focusing on. So this is present continuous passive. Right? Well, same here, 
This whole agenda is a fear of propaganda is an attempt, present simple. And we use present simple because it's a fact. He's kind of claiming that it's a fact. Um, some agenda, it doesn't matter. And it's are both present simple. General truth. This is interesting. Here we have present perfect passive. Oh, sorry, present uh, perfect continuous. And this is used because he moved to New Zealand uh, in 2001 and he still lives there. And he's probably going to live there a bit longer as well. So, Present perfect continuous because he still lives there. Of course, it could have been he has lived in New Zealand for the past 20 years. That's fine as well, right? You probably also has, have seen that we have for, which is one of our present perfect indicators. Right, so one of our present perfect indicators is here, for. Right. Um... The country is present simple. One of the several that have aimed to completely stamp COVID-19 is present perfect. So we use present perfect here because they started with aiming at the beginning of, of the kind of March 2020. Right? That's when they said, okay, we're going to do this. And they're still doing that, right? They still aim to eliminate uh, COVID-19 through these lockdowns. So it started in the past, their aim of the lockdowns, and it's still happening, it's still taking place. Um, would you use have been aiming? No, because but that's also because of the meaning of the word, I think. Um, if you would say they have been aiming to completely stamp out, then it's kind of like they haven't really done it yet. Right? That's also the meaning of the word aim. And if you would say, well, I'm aiming to do something, it's kind of a chunk to aim to do something um, in continuous form. It means that you haven't done it yet, that you're still um, aiming and trying to do it. But they've tried and whether they were successful or not depends, of course, on the context. But you know, they've tried and they're still trying to do that. Right? They're still trying to... Um, stamp COVID-19 through strict lockdowns. Right. Um, so, I think we can round off because we looked at real-world examples. We've looked at all the English tenses we wanted to use. Um, and if we go back to the beginning, we've done all of this. Right, we've looked at the examples, we've looked at present simple, present continuous, present perfect, present perfect continuous. We've created a timeline, right? And if you um, watch my videos on the, these tenses in three minutes, I'll add them to the timeline as well. So as soon as I think with uh, the future something, one of the final future three minute videos, we'll have a complete timeline. Um, and we looked at some real world examples um, of these tenses. Don't forget you can download my tenses overview from my um, wakelet and then you can fill it in. It's an interactive PDF so you can kind of fill it in as we're going and as you, you know, you either rewatch this or you find other information. Um, so that's basically it. So we've done everything I wanted to do. We've looked at all these tenses. Um, we had a bit of a hiccup when we get started at the beginning uh, with the PowerPoint, but still I think we've done everything in the way we should. I hope, definitely hope that this was something useful, that you've learned something about these tenses and that you now know how to use all these tenses. Next week, Wednesday at eight o'clock European time, Central European time, we're going to look at all the past tenses. So past simple, past continuous, past perfect, and past perfect continuous. And I'm going to look at how we can link past simple and present perfect together. So when do we use past perfect and when do we use um, past, uh, when do we use present simple and when do we use past simple? Well, that makes no sense what I just said, right? When do we use present perfect and when do we use past simple? That's what we're going to look at next week. For now, thank you for watching, thank you for joining these um, 
and this live stream on these amazing English tenses and I definitely hope to see you in the next live stream.